Hey everyone, Mr. Hogger here. Hope you had a really great week and that things are going well for your friends and family. I'm wishing you all the best from the heart. Hope you're doing really well. Today we're going to talk about systems of government. Just wanted to take a quick second and recap what we did last class. The five sources of power. Expertise, having the ability to punish or penalize through coercion. Number two, reward system using positive incentives. Four, persuading people to influence others. And five, formal authority when you have a position of power. We'll have a quiz coming up soon, and I just wanted to make sure you were good there and wanted to also recap what is the role of government to maintain public order, to protect life and property, and provide public goods. Feel free to pause and go over those again to recommit them to memory if you need that. But we're going to roll on and talk systems of government today, and we'll get you... Um, kind of a shorter lecture to make sure you have time for a processing assignment, which I hope that you will enjoy. So, so types of governments. There are many different forms of government, but really just eight apply to us in our modern world. First being an absolute monarchy where there's no constitution, just a person in charge ruling. The second, a limited monarchy that has a constitution, a representative democracy like we have here in the States, a direct democracy like ancient Greece where everyone has a vote directly, and dictatorship, oligarchy ruled by a few, totalitarianism, and theocracy. Let's dive in a little bit deeper. And here is a map that shows you all the governments of the world. Now, some of these are a little tricky. You notice that Russia is a democracy? You know Russia has all the rights and freedoms that anyone in the world has, right? Well, not according to the way we traditionally look at freedom, but they are classified as a democracy and they do have elections and the people do have some basic rights. So there you go. You got partial democracies on that list in green down in Mexico is an example to our southern neighbor. Traditional monarchies, there aren't that many left, but a lot of them were colonial era areas. Authoritarian regimes, we have some across North Africa, Central Africa and East Asia as well. A monarchy is going to probably remind you of watching Hamilton over the summer break. It's a system of government where power belongs to a ruling family. It's obtained by heredity through birthright. And power is justified by divine right, meaning God has given the family an authority to rule in most situations. There's some kind of absolutism or influence from a divine being. Monarchs are usually called kings, queens, emperors, or empresses. And there are two types, absolutists, where there's no constitution, you do whatever you want, nothing limits you, or a monarchy that has a constitution and you're limited by the scope of that constitution or the rights of the people. Denis Diderot, a French revolutionary wrote, men will never be free until the last king is strangled with the entrails, that's your guts, of the last priest. Huh, what a bright and stunning revelation, Denis. Has Denis had a bad day? Has is there, do we need to talk to Dennis? Do we need to get him some McDonald's? Man, that was a prof. Limited monarchies. Now, he was going through a lot there in France. Power of the monarch is limited by a constitution or a parliament. Uh, modern Britain and the United Kingdom could be examples. The first constitution in England was written in 1688 from a bloodless revolution and says that citizens have more rights like modern day England than absolute monarchies. Some monarchs have no real power at all, like the queen, who's just kind of a figurehead. But it doesn't sound that bad, having power, having strength, having money. I mean, that doesn't sound like the worst situation. Hey, looking at what powers the Queen of England actually has. And just... Hey, you want a point of extra credit? You can check out this video. What powers does the Queen of England actually have? Submit me a paragraph summary of the rights that she has, and I will throw you a bonus point. So that's going to be a little enticement for you to dig in a little deeper and gain an extra point on today's assignment coming up later. Democracy originated in ancient Greece, a system of government where power comes from the people. There are two types, representative democracy, that's what we have. You have reps in the state, you have senators, they're responsible for making laws that are supposed to look out for you. Power is usually taken through peaceful means in this form of voting by the people. Representative democracies like us have elections where we send our representatives to our capital to legislate, create laws, to check some balance on the president. And the advantage is that everyone has a voice, the disadvantage is that some people don't think elections matter or some people who feel like their candidate loses feels disconnected from the government and can be kind of divisive. 
Not that we're ever divisive in the United States. And you don't always get a direct voice. I mean, if there's a new tax tomorrow, you probably don't get to vote on that tax. You might be able to vote in California on something that affects you, like a sales tax increase. But if the federal government decides that they're going to do something to your paycheck or to a large amount of money for the nation, you're not going to get a direct vote in that decision. How would you set up a government differently? Family Guy has an idea. People of Cohort, I have something to say. Now that we've freed ourselves from the terrible shackles of government, it's time to replace it with something better. The first thing we need is a system of rules that everyone must live by. Gotta have rules. And since we can't spend all our time making rules, I think that we should elect some people to represent us and they should make rules and choices on our behalf. Hey, wait a minute. He's describing a representative democracy. Well, when I made and last taught this lesson, there was a government shutdown happening. And it was an example of the voice of the people in action. There were signs where people said we're being held hostage. There's signs here asking Congress to do their job. There's signs of people communicating to government officials outside the Capitol that they want to work. This is an example when people in a representative democracy speak back and try to get changes made to adapt to their needs. In this form of democracy, uh, the system works best. Like in Switzerland, where you have direct democracy, any law that is passed gets voted on by the people or can be vetoed. And early Athens is another example of direct democracy. That's when you have direct choices over everything. In a single party totalitarian state, a system of governments controlled by unchecked leaders, powers that are absolute. Why is Beyonce on this? There was certainly a joke when I had originally put that there. I cannot think of it right now. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. I know, I know, there's groans. You're rolling your eyes, I understand. Citizens have only the rights that the ruler chooses to give them, and this type of power is usually taken by force. Some examples are at the bottom of the screen. A system of government where power is controlled by a few people, citizens have very few rights. A legal system is also heavily punitive, meaning high punishments for crimes. North Korea and Cuba are present day examples. Hitler controlled Germany, Stalin and the USSR and Mussolini in Italy are historical examples that of course we'll probably mention later on and you probably spent a lot of time on as sophomores and juniors here at Heritage. A totalian, a totalian is not a word, a totalitarian coach example, uh, one of my favorite sketches where the system is highly punitive and the citizens have very few rights. It reminds me of Melissa McCarthy when she was hosting and reprised the role of a basketball coach who is quite authoritarian in their coaching of a girls basketball team. Let's check it out. And it's actually a funny example, but it, it, it has some meaning and some correlation where governments surveil citizens or you have a lack of freedom to speak out and, and record issues or problems. In a dictatorship, a form of government where Everything's controlled by one ruler. Power is taken by force and requires military support. At the end of the leader's period of rule, usually death, resignation, or overthrow, violence usually occurs in the transition to a new nation. What happens when citizens re re revolt? Here's another extra credit opportunity if I could speak the sentence properly. If you're looking for another example, look for this article from CNN in 2019. Read about what was happening in Venezuela with the military's uprising and government disagreements. Summarize that article in a paragraph and I will add an extra credit point. Email that as well or post it in Canvas and I will update that grade for you. Another chance to learn a little extra because we can always learn more about the modern world to understand the historical one. Here's another system of government, oligarchies, ruled by a few. So just a few people have power to serve their own interests. Power usually comes from royalty, wealth, family ties, education, corporate, race, or military control. Power is usually passed from generation to generation in family lines. South Africa was an example of apartheid when 10% of the nation was controlled and that 10% of the population controlled the entire country with devastating results. A theocracy is a country that's based on religious law, and Iran is a modern day example. This is most commonly found in the Middle East, in Saudi Arabia and Iran. 
Vatican City, while a microstate in its own nation, is also considered a theocracy. That's where the Vatican is for the Catholic Church near Rome. And punishments are usually harsh for violating law because you're violating religious expectations as well. Our country is a republic. Res publica, or public thing in Latin. I don't speak a lot of Latin. You can tell because I misspeak in English and I can make enough mistakes there. Citizens conduct their affairs for their own benefit rather than the benefit of a ruler. Power is usually from the people, either directly or indirectly. We're a democratic republic. We're based on a constitution and we vote for representatives. Check it out. See, I kept the lecture short. I know that I went a little long last time and people start to have wandering minds. Instead, I want you to have wandering browsers and phones as you dive into learning a little bit deeper. You're gonna create a graphic, which could be a chart or a Canva or a digital image, something you make in Photoshop. You don't wanna do an image? Fine, another choice. You could find a meme but you need to explain it with a paragraph over why this is historically true and what it's based on. That could take a little longer. So if you don't want to do a meme, you can also do a compare and contrast. No matter what format you choose, you're going to be choosing two. I'll say it again, two types of government. You could do direct democracy and single party state or totalitarianism and monarchy. You need to compare and contrast them, whether it's done in a graphic or in the analysis of a meme or a government report where you pick two nations and compare them, or you could just pick any two nations in the world and do an analysis of their government. You've noticed I've given you five or six different options. That's because I want you to choose a path that's interesting to you. I want you to find something that sparks your interest, whether it's visual or written. You could even record a podcast and talk auditorily about some recent news. You could go look at government news and compare and contrast two events from two different countries. I've just given you seven ideas. Choose one that you like. Choose one that you can live with. You can do it in slides or in a document or in Canva or in a graphic and just attach it and explain what you did. All right, so you need a definition and either a comparison or a historic and modern example. This is going to be based on your ability to find some information, cite it in parentheses, explain that you learned something and present me with information about two countries that are different. Cool? Awesome. If you want to work with someone in the class, you can do that. Put both names on them clearly and make sure you turn it in to hogrd at luhsd.net. That's it, everybody. Get to work. I am going to jump in now and answer any questions or clarify any questions you may have. Put that in the chat window and begin. We can get working and I will stay in the room and answer any questions during this session. It'd be just like if it was work time in the classroom. All right. I will also try to dig up some examples while we're in the room together. So let's get going. Thank you very much.